So you want to learn how to run a lead generation campaign on Pinterest with advertising. Well, the very first thing that you want to do is make sure your Pinterest pixel and event codes are set up on your website. I have a playlist I will link in the description down below if you've not done this part already. You can pause me here, go get that installed right away, and come back. Now, once you have your event codes and pixel installed, we can actually dive right into campaign setup. You can set your campaign up and then we can come back after the screen share and we will talk best practices about your Pinterest ad imagery and creatives and what to look for throughout. Okay, to get started with your Pinterest campaign creation, you're gonna go to ads and click cre create campaign and you're gonna see this screen. Now, a quick detour before we dive into your campaign setup. On your event tags, on your tag and your event codes under ads and conversions, if in the last 30 days you have not had a minimum of 50 events happening on your tag for the event you want to optimize for, then you will not be able to use a conversion campaign in that instance. So if that is the case, you're going to use option one, which is setting up a Legion campaign using traffic or consideration. So we're going to go to create campaign and we are going to use a consideration campaign. You're going to name it. And I typically like to give my campaigns names based on what I'm promoting. So in the drop down, you can see here strategy guide, December, 2022. I like to also put the date in the month on there. And then you're going to launch this into active. I would always recommend launching into active unless for some reason you want to draft it now and actually turn it on at a later date. Now, in this tutorial, we are ignoring flexible daily budgets. If you've watched any of my previous campaign setups, I do not want to talk about this right now. It was just released and there's just not enough data for me to support having you use this feature. So we're going to use a daily budget of whatever per day that you want to set. Um, let's just say we're starting with $10. I would not recommend starting with $10. Um, for lead gen, you're just, you're not going to get a lot, but if you want to start with 10 to test imagery, that's fine. Now click continue or on the left hand side, you can always toggle through your um, campaign and ad group setup by clicking these things on the left. Give your ad group a name. In this case, I like to name it based on whatever I'm targeting. So interesting keywords. And then in the targeting details section, you are going to see this selection. You're going to have three options. Reconnect, find new, or choose your own path. In this tutorial, I'm walking you through choosing your own path. These two are going to automatically take you to setting up either a retargeting campaign or a colder campaign where you're using an act like audience. And I do not suggest that for this specific purpose. We are doing cold campaign. We're looking for new customers, cold customers to get on our email list. So click select on choose your own path. And then under interesting keywords, open this up. Now this path, this setup process is going to be exactly the same for consideration and conversions. So I will show you option two in a moment. But we're going to assume in this instance that we are doing lead gen and we're going to use a design example. So perhaps we want to choose an audience within the design vertical. Now, as a B2B advertiser, I actually do use the design vertical or interests quite a lot, specifically business advertising and design and logo and identity design because these are where a lot of the business owners that I am looking to target are actually hanging out. So you'll notice I've chosen interests that are not the main level interest. I've actually chosen lower level interests. Now let me explain what these are. Under design, this would be an L1 interest. Underneath design, the very next level would be a level two. And then underneath interior design, that is a level three. And then further on down, we have luxury packaging. That would be a level four. And actually, it would be one, two, three, four, five. It would be a level five. Packaging would be four and luxury packaging would be five. So the further you get down into these interest categories, the smaller the audiences will actually be. So if I were to uncheck all of these and I was only to check luxury packaging. You can see it's less than 10K people estimated. If I add in business and advertising design again and luxury, let's just add in 
yeah, business and advertising. It takes us to two and a half to three. If I add in luxury interior design, it doesn't change us very much. If I add in book and magazine, it bumps us up closer to four. And then if I add web and app, it bumps us closer to 10. So you can see how these individual lower level interests will further refine your audience and your targeting. So you want to be a little bit more broad. You don't want to be so defined and have a, such a small audience because Pinterest, first of all, the frequency on your ads are going to be really high. That's how often people see your ads and your cost per lead is going to be extremely high. The smaller the audience, the higher the cost per lead. So once we have chosen our interests, now the reason I wanted you to see the level two, three, four, and five is because I would rather you choose these more granular interest levels underneath the level ones. That way, when you actually go into your reporting and let me show you what that looks like, you can actually see which interests are bringing you the most leads. So if we look at active and paused and I look in the last 30 days, which campaign has had spend. Okay, so this campaign has spend. So we're in the ad group level. So under campaign, you would choose the name of the campaign. It's gonna take you to your ad group level. You need to be in this level to see the targeting breakdown by interest. Underneath interest, you're gonna see, I have a bunch of level one, two, and three interests in here. So finance is a level one interest. And under finance, I have financial planning, real estate selling. These two are under finance. And then you can see here, I have had five signups under financial planning. And if I actually take this out and say this year, I've actually had signups under all of these. So you can see under real estate selling, I had two signups. So you'll be able to see better which actual level two, three, four, five interest housed under level one actually is getting you the most leads. So website and app design underneath that one interest of design has actually gotten me the most leads in this campaign in this time frame. I would rather you choose more granular level two, three, four, and five interests under your level one instead of just checking the box for design and moving on. Now that we have our interests, we actually would like to add some keywords to this. So I would have you come in here and add at least 25 keywords. Now you're gonna ask me, Heather, what kind of keywords? Should they be broad? And you're gonna see here, Broad phrase max, match, exact match, and negative, um, negative phrase match, and negative exact match. Always just go broad when you're very first starting out. So I typed in web design in here, and we have searches that have come up for those keywords. And you can see the monthly search amount over on the right. So what you can do if you scroll through here and you're like, yeah, I love all of these keywords. Just click the add all results button and then click see more, and you can go through them again and then click that again. Now, once you are happy with the number of keywords and the keywords you have chosen, you're gonna go and shrink this interesting keywords box down and you're gonna open demographics. Now, the only situation that I want you to remove anything out of demographics when you're very first starting a campaign, I would rather you leave all of this as all genders, all ages, everything default, except in one instance, if you know for sure, if you know for a fact that men are not in your audience, that you do not want to sell to men, that men cost you more money, remove them. Leave female, leave unspecified because all of the historical legacy accounts on Pinterest, meaning accounts that are the oldest on Pinterest, they didn't give us the ability to add a gender when I very first signed up 12, 13 years ago. So leave unspecified on because a lot of females actually happen to appear in unspecified. And then the non-binary um, option also shows up in this category now. Everything else remains the same unless you have age-restricted advertising, which is typically adult-themed content like liquor. Okay, leave placement and tracking alone. And then under, this is the last part of your consideration campaign setup for lead gen leave automatic bidding alone, and then you're going to select your Pinterest images. Whatever pins you want to promote, go ahead and click those pins and add them in. Now, if you do not have them uploaded to Pinterest yet, I would encourage you to upload them on the Create tab organically before you promote them because this allows you to get more reach organically rather than just through your paid ads 
And then once your ads start running, once people start saving those pins, those metrics are actually housed under that organic pin. So it gives the organic pin more juice is what I'm trying to tell you. So go and upload them organically and then you'll come back in here and click select pins and they will appear in this screen. Choose the image, click add, verify the URL is correct. If you want to add additional tracking information, such as a UTM code, you can do so in that box. I typically build my UTM codes under the GA Dev Tools uh, website, and then I actually just put the full UTM code in the box. So if we are doing a full UTM URL, I would just put it in this box right here, and I wouldn't worry about it using this add tracking URLs. Okay, now I want to walk you through setting up a conversion campaign just really quickly. Everything, every single thing will be the same for your conversion campaign, except you are going to have one little box different. So you're going to choose select your own. You're going to set up all your targeting details. So let's go into design and choose all these things again. Now we have the same audience. We have, let's just pretend we have our keywords. And then we shrink this box down. We remove men. In this instance, we were removing men in the last example. This is the only thing that is different. So the only reason you are going to use a conversion campaign over consideration for lead gen is if you have enough signups on your tag in the last 30 days. Again, the way that you figure that out is by going to conversions underneath your ads drop down. And then you'll have 30 days here and you'll see here I've had 64 checkouts and 291 leads in the last 30 days. Now you can come in and add any additional ones. I forgot to show you that earlier. Um, and under this one, I have had no signups. So I cannot optimize a conversion campaign for signups. I can, however, optimize it for leads because I've had 291 in the last 30 days. Now, this is the same thought process if you're starting a conversion campaign for sales, you could do checkouts and add to carts. That is the only difference in your campaign setup between consideration and conversion. Click leave automatic bidding alone, click and choose your conversion event, and then you're gonna select your pins to promote. So again, add all of the pins that you wanna promote, verify the URLs are correct, Make sure that you're happy with the way this looks. If you would like to preview any of your ads before you set them live, you can click preview pin and you will open your mobile device and you will open your notifications and you can click and see what the ad looks like before you set it live. So that is how you set up your very first or if this is the 31st Pinterest lead generation campaign. Okay, we're back. Now that you know how to set up your Pinterest lead gen campaign, I have a few things that you will want to know. Number one, you will not be able to run a conversion campaign like I showed you in the setup process until you have at least 50 conversion events on your tag in 30 days. Pinterest may say seven days, but I'm telling you it's 30 days. Number two, if you're starting a brand new ad account, you may be faced with the ability to only set your Pinterest daily ad budget to $20 per day. If you come across this, one way that you can get around it is by launching your campaign at $20 per day, going back in and editing the campaign and reducing the daily budget down to whatever you want it to be. Now, there is a little caveat. Your campaigns are not gonna perform as well on a lower daily budget. You can probably get away with a $10 per day budget over on Facebook ads and still generate 10 to 15 leads a day. However, on Pinterest, that's generally not the case for the majority of people. So, just keep that in mind if you do run across that issue. Number three, make sure you're using a call to action of some kind on your Pinterest imagery itself. So on the actual image, I'm gonna show you in a moment some of my best performing Pinterest ads and put them on the screen and let you see what they have looked like recently. Now, all of your imagery should have some sort of call to action like sign up, download now, learn more, things like that. 
That way people know that this is something that they can actually download. Now, a bonus tip, you can actually put that little call to action in the very front of your pin title as well. So free guide for Pinterest strategy, free guide for healthy weight loss, free guide for fill in the blank. So you can use your pin title for that as well. Here are some of my best performing Pinterest images for ads. So this was one of my most recent images and you're not gonna be able to see it here. So we're actually gonna put it on the screen and it says a free guide. And then the imagery is actually my guide laid out, it's like fanned out. And then it says, grab our free 13 page guide to jumpstart your Pinterest strategy for 2023. This was one of the last advertising creatives I ran on Pinterest for lead gen in the fall. And it actually performs quite well for me. Now, the next one is has a call to action of learn more. This one also performed very well, but the CPA, the cost per action rose significantly. And it says, need a Pinterest strategy. Grab my free Pinterest strategy guide and jumpstart yours today. Next one is one that I've actually used for quite a while, for all of the year and off and on when I've ran advertising and it's done really well. And it says, use Pinterest for sales, Grab your free strategy guide and learn how to start using Pinterest in 2022. And then the next one is actually an older graphic and it's my old branding colors prior to 2022. And it says how to craft your Pinterest strategy free guide and there's just an image of a guide. So I will make sure to put all of these images on the screen. It doesn't really matter in what way you can put, you can mix and match your graphics so you could have a solid background. If you're doing lead gen with a freebie or an opt-in, you can put the pictures of the opt-in on there. I also have some of my graphics with images of me on there. You could use stock photos if you wanted to, or if you're giving away, if you're e-commerce and you're looking to lead gen with a percentage off your first order, you could always use images of your product and that could be your call to action. Get 10% off your first order or get 25% off when you spend $75 or more. Whatever your messaging is, you can definitely mix and match graphics and mock-ups for lead gen on Pinterest. Now, I will say the majority of all the lead gen that my agency does for our clients is through standard or static pins. However, we do have some videos on occasion that we do lead gen for but primarily we do lead gen with standard images in a conversion campaign optimizing for leads or signups. A quick bragging moment here, because one of my current consulting clients is actually getting leads for 63 cents a pop during the busiest season of the year, which is completely unheard of. And it's because of the niche that she's in. She's in the marriage and family niche. So I just wanted to call it out because it is possible to get really cheap leads on Pinterest. And it's also possible to get really expensive leads on Pinterest. So make sure that you're really clear on your audience. You're really clear on your messaging and your offer. Make sure that your creatives match the landing page, the messaging and the cohesiveness of the design do match as much as possible and you are utilizing those calls to actions. Quick caveat on the video advertising creative. If you do want to use video for lead gen, it doesn't actually matter lead gen or sales. Make sure the first six seconds of your video is actually optimized with your text overlay and your call to action because the average watch time on advertising for Pinterest is six seconds. So you want to front load all of that information on the front of your video. Now that you know how to set up your very first lead gen campaign on Pinterest, you're going to want to know how to optimize your campaign for better performance. I want you to go and watch this video all about optimizing your Pinterest ads, and I will see you next week.